the notion of maximizing water productivity, while compelling, doesn't really come from any underlying conceptual framework or any fundamental principle of hydrology or agronomy. We calculate these measures and it seems compelling to think that we should maximize them or that a farmer achieving a higher water productivity is doing better than a farmer achieving a lower productivity. But that's not necessarily the case. Farmers, in part, have to think about other issues when they go about selecting crops and selecting inputs. Many farmers, particularly those in rain-fed settings, need to manage risk. Farmers that depend on rainfall don't know when it's going to rain for sure. They have to think hard about when they're going to plant their crops, when and how much fertilizer they're going to use, how they're going to cultivate their crops, and how they're going to manage pest populations. There's so much uncertainty and risk in rain-fed farming, and also in irrigated farming, that many farmers, particularly at the small scale, have to invest quite a bit of effort managing that risk and uncertainty, often because they have very little freeboard by which to absorb great reductions in yield or sudden shortfalls in output or revenue. Here again, this measure of water productivity is just inadequate to describe the real farm-level setting. So I would suggest that not many farmers around the world endeavor to maximize water productivity. Rather, they endeavor to ensure that they have crops with sufficient yields and generate sufficient revenues to maintain their livelihoods over time. They know very well that rainfall is going to vary. They know, too, that all of these stochastic influences that determine eventual crop yields change from year to year. They have to be adaptive and they have to choose strategies that minimize their downside risk. While all of this might sound compelling to you and me, it doesn't lend itself to analysis quite as easily as simply calculating water productivity estimates. And I think that's one reason why we do a lot of that. We can observe yields, we can observe water applied, and it's easy to make that calculation. But the information that's missing is precisely the information we need to truly evaluate agricultural production settings and to find the policy measures we need to improve livelihoods on the part of those farmers that are operating in those environments. I think my concern is more general that over time, as people present comparisons of water productivity calculations in one location or another, or across one crop activity for another, the policymakers at the margin might begin to move resources in a direction that's not necessarily optimal. For example, suppose someone takes a look at cotton production and wheat production or rice production and estimates some water productivity estimates in which they're comparing the revenue generated per cubic meter of water invested in that production activity. And they show perhaps that cotton has a higher water productivity in terms of revenue per cubic meter than does rice, for example. Over time, policy makers then might get the idea that we should be shifting away from rice production into cotton production, if that's the only piece of information they're considering. One can imagine many settings where rice is indeed a very pertinent crop, whether it's in a monsoonal climate or in a culture where rice is very important or where farmers have substantial human capital invested in rice production. It might be a very unwise policy decision to move from rice away to cotton based only on that estimate of water productivity, for example. So I think often we want policymakers to be thinking about livelihood implications, about the socioeconomics of agricultural production. And we want policymakers to be thinking about risk and uncertainty in the way that farmers think about risk and uncertainty. We want our policymakers to be thinking about those very things that we, the agricultural and development researchers, think about all the time. And it's those issues, those parameters, that simply aren't considered in estimates of water productivity. So I don't know that anybody's being harmed yet today by estimating water productivity, but I do worry that down the road, if that's the type of information we're providing to policymakers without sufficient information on all these very other important aspects of production, that policymakers at some point might begin making decisions that aren't optimal 
and might even be harmful to some degree. Well, I think there are many researchers. I think there are many researchers that are still studying the broad spectrum of agricultural issues, the variables and the parameters that really matter in terms of examining crop yields and understanding livelihoods. I think there's still a large, vibrant, and rich set of research activities underway because many people understand the importance of looking at all of these issues. I think that work is more challenging. It's more expensive to conduct because we need to look at a wider range of inputs. We need to study more outputs and we need to work more carefully with farmers. We need to spend more time in the field, understanding the nuances of agricultural production, watching and observing farmers, how they make decisions and how they do address risk. I think if there's a underside or a, an unfortunate aspect of the water productivity literature is that it is proliferating the pages of many journals with articles that simply provide these estimates of water productivity, which by themselves are not so helpful. I think then there are probably two aspects of this that we can think about going forward. One is not just the fact that we're spending a lot of time and effort producing these reports and these studies, looking at a measure that's really too narrow to be helpful, but at the same time, it's absorbing some of the human capital, some of the research capital, that could be going into more meaningful endeavors, I think. And those more meaningful endeavors, again, are those like the ones we just discussed, where we really do spend time understanding the farm level production setting much better. And we try our best to measure those things, which really matter, but are difficult to quantify that we do try to understand the risk aversion strategies of farmers better than we do today. And what do those risk aversion strategies mean for the way in which we should allocate or price water resources, or for the types of support we should provide outside the water sphere? One of the difficulties with water productivity estimates in that by not including other inputs, such as fertilizer, such as pesticides and labor, planting dates and the quality of seed, we don't know much about the production setting in a way that we also frankly don't know too much about water in production. Because the real impacts of water in production depend upon the availability and the quality of so many other inputs as well. So I don't think we get much information about water or the other inputs in agriculture by simply looking at these estimates of water productivity. This creates a deficiency in our knowledge it doesn't necessarily block out the other good work that's taking place, but one might be concerned that we could be doing more than we're doing today if all of us were engaged in really studying the complexities of agriculture as we know them.